G'day, it's Rusty from Rusty's Outback Adventures and in today's video I want to show you the uh, electrical system that we've installed in the canopy and I'm going to start from where the power comes from under the bonnet all the way to the um, panel in the canopy and also the, all the outlets that we've installed. So Under the bonnet we've taken a feed from the positive of the battery to we have two separate resettable circuit breakers. This 40 amp circuit breaker here feeds out of there down under the chassis which is the alternator feed into the DC DC charger. The second circuit breaker here is the separate feed for the Anderson plug on the back of the car which we either connect to the caravan for the fridge while we're driving, connects to the camper trailer for uh, that charger input or it's also designed to run our air compressor. It's got an Anderson plug on the end of it so that's under the bonnet. Before I installed the panel, first of all I needed to work out how much power did I need, what electrical appliances am I going to be running in the canopy that needed power, what the total current draw was, how I was going to provide power to the canopy and the electrics when I wasn't on the road. Um, so a lot of those questions you need to talk about before you even start building anything and in my case I've got two angles in here we run one as a fridge one as a freezer each of those angles draws about 2.6 amps each when they're running um, done some tests recently and they're on and off cycles around about three minutes on six minutes off that can vary a little bit but we haven't had them in a really hot environment so maybe that'll go up a little bit more maybe they'll run a bit more often um, the other things that we need to consider are lighting at night we have internal lights, and I'll show you them shortly, we have internal lights in the canopy on both sides. We have door lights, so when you lift the door, you turn the switch on, it gives you a light under the door so it floods the ground outside. At the moment, we've only got it on two doors, but we do intend to put it on all three. Uh, I also have a series of cigarette outlets and USB outlets in each of the four corners of the canopy, uh, as well as an inverter that we've installed which is a 700 watt inverter designed for me to be able to charge my drone batteries, my metal detector batteries, um, charge my toothpaste, <laughs> charge my toothbrush, um, allows me to have a shave because I suck at using a razor, a hand razor. So little things like that. Um, we don't take a coffee machine with me. I'm not interested in that. I'm a hot chocolate guy, not a coffee guy. Uh, cup of tea, boil the kettle. I'm fine with that. So that to me was what I needed. Um, battery wise, 100 amp hour deep cycle battery was probably okay. I did opt for two um, just to give me a little bit of security and a little bit of uh, redundancy. And from a solar perspective, on the roof we've installed a 160 watt solar panel and that comes in through the DC DC charger. And as well as that, we have the ability to connect in a portable 200 watt solar panel, which gives us, in effect, you know, three, 360 watts of solar. If it's a cloudy day, yeah, we'll need all of that. If it's a nice sunny day, by lunchtime, our batteries are charged and we're just sitting on float. So that's our setup. Um, before I started, as I said, I determined what I needed. I also then determined what room I had in, in the canopy to put a panel and it ultimately located uh, on this passenger side front. I did build a previous panel, but we stripped it out and moved it because it was in the wrong spot. Um, the other important thing to do is to get yourself a wiring diagram. I've drawn up a diagram. Here's one I prepared earlier. Okay, I'll, I'll, put a, I'll post a photo in the, uh, in the video, but basically what that does is it tells me where the circuit comes in, what appliances I've got, what connections I'm using, what circuit breakers I'm using and everywhere, and basically gives me an idea of what I need before I start. And that to me is quite important. I just use PowerPoint to draw this, but you can draw it in a pen and paper and it's, it's fine. As, as long as you know what you're doing and where things are going, it makes it so much easier to wire up and install. The other thing I also needed to determine was uh, current draw. Very important to get your cable sizing right, very important to get your, your lugs crimped correctly. Big debate over soldering versus crimping. I crimped all of mine, did solder some of the big heavier ones, but yeah, that's 
Um, a proper crimper tool will give you the best crimp. And once I decided what I needed, where it was going to go, I then built a frame and I installed the, the electrical panel. So I'd just like to run through in detail all the components on the panel and what they all do. So this panel is a timber frame panel. The front is timber, marine ply. When I started, I laid out all the components I was going to use to work out what was going to go where and tried to wire them in some sort of logical order. So this is a hinged panel so I can open it and have a look and, and all my what cabling underneath is is fairly neat. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> okay, so let's start here with this circuit breaker. I used resettable circuit breakers, the manual reset ones. The idea being is if something happens and the, the circuit breaker trips for any reason, I don't want it to automatically reset. I need to know where the fault is and in which circuit the fault is on. So with that in mind, um, I might have gone overboard, but for me this system works and I'm, I'm quite comfortable with it. So, okay, alternator in. This is the cable from the circuit breaker under the bonnet I showed you earlier. 40 amp cable comes in here, comes out of here and comes into this DC-DC charger. This DC-DC charger is a Red Arc BCDC 1225D. Basically means it's a 25 amp output charger. It's a dual input, so it, select, it, it accepts alternator in while I'm driving. It also accepts solar in. If I'm driving, it'll take solar first, and if it doesn't make up the required output for the batteries, it will then kick the alternator in as well, which is a nice thing to have. The DC-DC charger gives me three stages. It's um, a bulk charge, an absorption, and then a float. So I can look at the little display on the side and it'll tell me how it's going. The second circuit breaker is a solar in. So the solar input into here, output from the solar circuit breaker, the yellow one comes in here. So there's my two inputs to my circuit to my DC DC charger. I can actually pop the button and open one of them if I didn't if I chose not to use one side of it. The charger has a DC output. So this brown wire is the DC DC output. This circuit breaker then is a manual reset little pop little button on the top. Um, this outputs to behind the panel here I've got a distribution block for positive and negative. So from there we feed to the fuse panel. It also feeds down to the batteries. From there it feeds to the batteries via a battery switch. So if I pop this 100 amp breaker I basically disconnect the batteries from the circuit and I have no power on the board at all. The fuse panel is, is fed with a 50 amp circuit breaker. Each of these fuses in here, if I can take this off, has a, a 10 or 15 amp fuse depending on the circuit. And I have labeled each of these F1 to 6, and I'll show you that in a second what I've done. I also have a, mentioned earlier, I have a 700 watt pure sine wave inverter, which is also has a feed from the distribution block through here to the inverter. The negative side goes to the negative distribution block behind the panel, which then feeds to the batteries. Um, I also have a supply here that I haven't connected anything yet, but the idea of this, this is a feed from the cranking battery. So if this system was completely disabled, I could still run some power from my cranking battery for a short time, understanding that of course if I'm draining off this, I'm draining off the crank battery, but it gives me an option to have a, a separate, maybe a cigarette outlet, I'm thinking cigarette outlet and one light, if I got in trouble at least I could have some power in here. So I haven't wired that in yet, but it's, it's installed. Alright, so on the left here I've got three panel meters. These are the Hall effects, Hall effect type panel meters, which means they measure current via having a toroid coil and the power cable goes through the 
coil rather than cutting and lugging and having something in series. The voltage is directly across the batteries in this stage or whether it's coming from the uh, solar panel input. This top one measures my solar in. As you can see, the solar panel on the roof is giving me 2.4 amps at 11.3 volts coming up. It's a cloudy day at the moment. My batteries are full, so I don't expect to be getting much out of them, but that's what I'm showing at the moment. The charger out panel is exactly that. It's telling me what's coming out of the charger and going to the batteries. So I'm putting two and a half amps into the batteries and currently the battery voltage is 13.4 volts. I'll just have a quick look. This stage light on the charger is blinking twice every two seconds. So basically it's in, it's just in absorption mode. The third panel meter is what it is a load out. So this is telling me how much current I'm pulling out of my batteries. And again, the voltage component is the battery voltage. At the moment, because there's nothing plugged in, I have no output. But if I turn this interior light on, and this this panel here is duplicated on the, on the other side, on the driver's side as well. So the innermost switch turns on the interior light and with the dimmer I can wind it up. So flat out, I'm pulling two amps off the interior light. Way too much light at night time. So I wind that down. I typically run it barely, barely uh, on, only drawing 0 0.2, 0 0.3 of an amp. The middle switch gives me a door light. I mentioned before, I'll, I'll show you that in a second. This switch is currently spare, but I'm not sure what I'm use it for, but I'm thinking maybe an alternate orange light for night time. We also have here a cigarette outlet, and the lid keeps popping open, and I also have a dual USB, one amp and 2.1 amp USB outlet. And that's duplicated in the other front corner and both rear corners of the panel, and I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. I marked each of the fuses F1 to F6, and as you can see here, this is F1. So the fuse F1 relates to this panel. Um, F3 is the back corner. F5 is, is vacant. On the other side, F2 is the other panel, the equivalent of this. F4 is the dedicated cigarette outlets that I have for the two angles, which uh, normally sit where the camera is now, and F6 is the rear outlet box in the corner. So this box in the passenger side corner of the canopy is marked F3, relates to F3 on the fuse panel, off on switch, which at the moment is not used, a twin USB outlet, both 4.2 amp, and it measures the Currently the battery voltage 14.4 also gives me a cigarette outlet. Now F2, this box is the passenger side version of what you've seen earlier. Interior light switch. And I'll just show you that. If I wind the dimmer up, oh, wind the dimmer up, we get oodles of light in this canopy at night time. Um, Again, this switch at the moment I don't have a door switch for, but I will shortly. And in the rear pas panel, a duplicate of the other side, F6 being the same. This switch here lights up that door strip, so when the doors open we get light on the outside. Again, twin USB and a cigarette outlet. This twin cigarette outlet marked F4 is my dedicated angle outlet, so that's where the because they get two angles sit here. And while I'm here, I'll just show you, we're running twin 100 amp hour AGM, that's the uh, glass mat version, absorbed glass mat, deep cycle batteries. Uh, with any deep cycle battery, you only get half its capacity as valuable use. So two together really gives me a total of 100 amp hours. And as I said before, we can charge them up. Typically by lunchtime, even with the single panel on the solar panel on the roof, we're charged ready to go. And I feel that's more than enough I need. The state of charge of a 
AGM style deep cycle battery can be accurately determined by the voltage across the battery and as this chart shows the um, voltage compared to the percentage of state of charge you can see that as I said before you've really only got 50% capacity in your battery before you really need to um, have them charged again and 12.05 volts is typically 50% of the, of the uh, battery state of charge. Overnight with two angles running and even using the lights in the evening um, our batteries are typically around the 12.4 to 12.5 uh, volts so as you can see you're running you've still got 75 percent of the capacity of the battery left so that's why it really only takes us you know sort of till lunchtime the next day to get those batteries charged up again I guess that's another reason why we use two batteries it also gives us a little bit more storage capacity as well this is our 160 watt solar panel we've installed on the roof and it connects via the original MC4 cables to an Anderson plug. We have these Anderson plugs installed under these covers, both sides. So we can connect on the other side a portable solar panel if we need to add extra capacity for our solar charging. Well, that's the electrical panel in my canopy. I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you got something out of it. If you like the video, thumbs up would be great. It's just about to rain, so I'm gonna get wet here. Um, if you'd like to subscribe, the subscribe button I think is down here somewhere. It would be great to have you along. If you have any comments or questions, uh, please put them in the comments below. I answer all your questions and interested to hear what your setup looks like. And uh, I have done the install video for the solar panel I mentioned earlier. I think I'll put the link here for you. Um, again, thanks for watching and we'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.